So C and Arsenal is back in the shop again, and they've asked me to look at a couple of bird's head wobblies. There's a minor repair that needs to be done to one, and we're going to talk about a few differences and point a few things out. Well, Thias will cover the rest of it later, but let's get down a rabbit hole, huh? Two Webley bird's head handguns here, a Mark IV and a Mark V. There are some minor details that need to be accomplished to these. Um, there's a few things that I just want to point out real quick, just as a gunsmith, obviously, to me. We'll hold it up in a little bit, but this particular gun, even though it's Mark for 455 Webley, has actually had the rear end of its cylinder shaved. You can see there's a very, very small amount of distance right here, whereas on the number four, on the Mark IV, there's a large amount of distance. This was done specifically in order to allow moon clipped 45 ACP in order to drop in in headspace on the moon clip. Ordinarily, head spacing would be accomplished on the on the mouth of, of the case right here where you would ordinarily head space it, um, say, like when we did the 455 Webley episode we were head spacing back here in the rim but in this case we're head spacing up on the nose so the thing that's relevant about that is 45 acp is not 455 webley 45 acp is significantly hotter the 45 webley the the, the revolver round only goes 700 to 750 feet per second and a stock 45 acp rounds running in the 900 somewhere 880 to 900 so it's inherently hotter how much do you trust the heat treat on your old gun so i would recommend if you're going to shoot one of these things regularly find a guy that reloads and come back off these things about 10 percent and step down a little bit and be kind to your uh be kind to your older guns there's a few other things here we want to look at this particular gun boy this bad boy's been in a hot and sandy man there is a um over on the other side here, there's an Arabic cartouche on this. This gun's been in Egypt. There's, um, not, not Arabic, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, ah, Sanskrit, I don't know, Urdu. Uh, some kind of off the wall, sort of Chinese-ish, I don't know. Anyway, there are in four, uh, foreign markings on this. There's a marking here that indicated that the gun come out of service. But the other thing that tells me that it's been in the hot and sandy, and I gotta see if I can't get this where you can see it. You see this gap right here? These grips are made out of horn. Horn is basically fingernails with hair in it. So horn does not like to be dried out. It doesn't like to, um, to be experiencing uh, variations in humidity. So these old grips have shrunk, whereas, say, on a weapon that saw most of its time in Great Britain, it did not. We're up inside the operational revolver, and we've noted a couple of things here. This pin right here, and I've got my finger behind it so you can see it right there. That pin allows the star to stay aligned and not rotate in this, this arrangement. The other gun, the star is actually allowed to move. So when it's down in, hang on a minute. Let me talk about that in a minute here. This can actually, can actually pronate out of position, you see? It's not something that would keep you from shooting the gun, but it's just not right. And there's a five-sided hole down inside here that will eventually wallow itself out. Ah, what a pain in the neck. We have to remove the cylinder from this weapon, and this thing is coin-slotted. This screw right here, wait a minute, we've got to have the pokey device looking the right way. That screw right there is coin-slotted so that that can be rotated, and then this entire edifice can pivot out of the way, cause this lever to pop down and allow us to take the cylinder off. I'm going to try to do this just like Othias says you can't watch look through my hands but here we go it's definitely coin slotted we'll use our tuppence here in order to rotate it um, the rim of a 303 cartridge works awfully well for this also there's usually one of those lying about smartly when you need it this will then rotate out of the way cause that to rotate and the entire cylinder just comes off in your hand the next thing we then have to do is unscrew this and I'm going to tell you it's loose because I took it apart before because I'm not going to embarrass myself. I'm dumb enough as it is without having to try to find out something on live. Okay, and then this will pop out. So, we note a few things. Flat sides. 
flat sides undamaged as yet. There's a hole here that the piece has to go into that is full of broken off. It's, it's broken off. So that hole will have to be drilled out. And of course, the piece that we need to get rid of is down inside this hole. So we're just going to pray that that piece there is nice and soft and we'll be able to bore that out. To the vice, Batman. Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3, Mark 4 had the small diameter cylinder. Mark 5 and Mark 6 had the large diameter cylinder. So in our particular case, the shaved cylinder is the optimum thickness for 45 ACP, but nobody in their right mind at Webley ever dreamed this gun was going to get shot with that cartridge. So just be kind to your guns, guys. Take it easy and download your 45 if you insist upon shooting it in the shaved cylinder Webley. The reason for the shave was this is a moon clip, and this moon clip has a certain amount of thickness. Ordinarily, 45 ACP head spaces on the case mount, but in this particular case, we're going to allow this rim to lay flat here and keep these from going in. If you don't have this moon clip, that sucker disappears. It's gone. It's down in there. You can't shoot it. So that's why they have to shave this rim in order to accommodate this to allow you to even shoot this. You can do this as half moon clips, full moon clips. Ah, oh, heck, I don't even know if they come in twos, but uh, you know, lunar eclipse clips, I don't know. We're having a lunar eclipse here next week. So what the heck, right? I've reset here to show you that there's that, that hole that that pin's got to go down inside of. And that hole on this one is obviously the two, you know, the quarter of an inch deep that it has to be in this particular hole has got the pin snapped off in it. And I still haven't entirely determined what my response is going to be because this gun, while it's made out of steel, isn't really made out of high carbon steel. So I've just got to be careful about dropping drill bits down in there. We're going to put a smaller diameter drill bit down there and see if we can get persuade that sucker to rotate and it should fall out. I might put a little bit of heat on this, not enough to draw the temper, put a little bit of penetrating oil in it, wave my magic wand at it, and yeah, do some of that gunsmithing crap, Mark. I'm going to go in, and I'm doing this in reverse angle. You can't see what I'm doing, but I, it's just, it films better this way. Hey, public service, not public service announcement. Let me tell you something, guys, about, there have been some comments about why didn't you do it this way. A lot of times, I'm working at arm's reach. I'm backed up so you can't see my boobies here. I'm out of the way so that you can see what I'm doing. But a lot of times, I'm doing things on a bench. When I ground at recoil pad, I ground at recoil pad at arm's length. And I'm going to tell you, it was uncomfortable, and I had to make some tweaks after we got off camera. But if you want to see it as well as I see it, you're going to have to get around, get your arms around the fact that I'm probably not showing it how I would ordinarily do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is run this brand new drill bit in to the hole and I'm gonna hope that it hooks up on the pin, grabs it and lets me spin it out. That's what I'm gonna hope for. So I'm gonna go real slow and see if it'll bite and it's moving shavings. Now what I do not wanna do is snap the drill bit off in the hole. So I have used a small size drill bit that, oh boy, that's a hard ass pin. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. What I don't want to do is sit here and walk the drill bit around in a hole like this and wallow the hole out because then I introduce a whole other layer of problems. That's a hardened steel pin. We're going to be back here in a second. I got to do a little bit of research. We put a little bit of the heat on it. Guys, do not heat this thing up more. I've got some oil on it. So once the oil starts smoking at about 300 degrees, that's about all the hotter we want to go. This helps the penetrating oil penetrate. We are not heating this up hot enough to affect its metallurgy. Don't do that. Don't heat this thing up hot enough. This is not a screw that we're fire blowing. This is the pressure containing vessel on a revolver. I just should remember that. But all I'm doing by warming this up is kind of provoking that penetrating oil to kind of penetrate a little bit more. Yeah, that's enough. It just spit the oil out of the hole there. All right, we're gonna let that sit here for a few seconds. Hmm. A can of Croil, eh? Croil's some great stuff, guys. Everybody has their own pet penetrance. I particularly prefer Croil. Croil, this stuff will creep into a millionth of an inch. So what we've done here is I put this back down on the top of the vise, and after we got it hot, I picked it up with a set of oven mitts, and I dropped a little bit of this Croil down in it in order to persuade... Hang on a second here. I'll show you right where we're at. 
you don't believe that there's a hole here, but there's a hole here. Hang on a minute. Just nudge it with the vise. I got the jaws out. Don't kill it. Okay, so there's the hole right there. That's the hole. And we've now got the penetrating oil. We've made it bubble, and there's this rusty, nasty gunk coming up out of it. And I'll keep doing this routine over and over again, and then I'll go back in and see if I can't get a hold of it with a drill. What I do not want to do is get out in this hole and snap a drill bit off because Otias will be all kinds of happy. We know that this pin is so hard that I can't even dent it with a, with a drill bit. Heated it up, got all the nasty goop to come bubbling up out of it. Got my anvil out. I'm going to try something here. You know what a southern boy says when he's about to commit suicide? Hold my beer, I'm going to try something. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Otheus may be the guy that's the producer of the show, but at the end of the day, my Roman name is Testicles. So let's see if this works. I might get lucky and get the... Oh, look at that. Ta-da! How about that, huh? All right, so I've done a couple things off camera here to make sure I didn't embarrass myself. These fingers are really, really, really soft and can be bent very easily. So what I've done is I've come in, that pin came all the way through to the top and terminated right there. And we very gently drilled the top of it out. So now in order to drive it out, we have competing problems here. This has to be supported, but we need to have something to drill or we need to have a, a place for the pin to go. So I'm going to say that that is right where the center of it is. And then what I'm going to do is this. Okay. I'm a tool. You're a tool. We're all tools, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drill a hole in the top of my vice jaws. The vice jaws are consumable. Your vice is a tool. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drill a place for that. I'm going to drill a place for that pin to go. And I'm going to make a one-of-a-kind bench block that not only holds the part, but also causes me to have some place to drive this. Now, I've made a punch out of a sixteenth of an inch drill bit, and I've cut the end off. So here we go. There's my punch. I'm going to set it there, and I'm going to drive the offending part down into the hole in the top of my vise. And when we're done, the part's gone, and we now have a hole drilled slammed through the thing, and we're ready to go make us another pin. I've heated this up because this is made out of very soft iron, so I wanted to make sure that we even kneeled it. I'm back over the hole that I drilled in the vise before. I am retrieving from my toolbox, as we speak, an appropriately sized punch, and we are just going to very, very gently walk this sucker back through this hole. What we're trying to do is avoid cracking this thing by overstressing it. You want to see the unicorn? You want to see unobtainium? That bad boy right there. Because they're all one of a kind. So I'm just very, very, very lightly driving this through this hole. So I'm going to pull it out and make sure we're making some headway here. And we are. See, we're coming through now. There we go. Now you can see it right there in that little black pocket. It's coming through. What I don't think, I, I need to drill my divot a little bit larger. So I'm just going to pop out here, go grab a larger drill bit. As we continue to roll. Outstanding. So I'm going to select a slightly larger drill bit. But what's important here is we're just trying to support the work. We're trying to support it. Oh boy, that's way too big. Custom vice jaws. We make my own vice jaws. I couldn't care less. You have to be able to... Your workbench is a tool, man. It is. Your workbench is part of your toolkit. You have to not be afraid to modify your workbench. I'm sure there are people out there, oh my god, he just drilled a hole in his drill bench. Well, whatever. So that's going in. That's going to come down flat. And then when I get this whole star wheel refit and shaped, I'll come back in with a stone and very gently clean the top of this off until it's flush. All right, this star is so soft that as you can see, that, that's towed in. 
that finger is bent down so this entire star is going to have to be hand fit again so we're going to go ahead and hand fit this star and we're just going to begin by touching off notice i'm not using a tremendous amount of force here guys i'm handling this thing like it's a carton of eggs because of its historical significance you got to give it a little bit of do so we're just going to very lightly we're going to masse this sucker down into the hole and that's where the pin wants to be don't want to hit it too hard you not create a flat spot you see how hard i'm hitting this not very and it's moving Okay, I want to drive that pin just a little bit further. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get out a Sharpie marker and we're going to Sharpie this whole thing and we're going to go back in and take off all this, the shiny spots until we get to the point where it will just, it will have no play. I don't know how to say it. It's not loose, but it has no play. You can use blue in, you can use die chem. You can use paint. For me, a good marker is uh, just a Sharpie marker works, works really well. I don't claim to be a machinist. I know professional machinists, though, that tell me this works really well. So here's what's going to happen. When we insert this in here, I'm letting this dry while I'm talking to you, this Sharpie marker will be rubbed off on whatever it's rubbing on, and then we'll take the silver spots and polish the silver spots with the stone. Remark, repolish, remark, repolish, remark, until this thing falls apart. So there's two things I want to look at. I want to set that back in there, and I'm telling you, this sucker is damn near there. I didn't have to hit it very hard. But the force of indexing the cylinder clockwise Without that dog in there, that piece that broke is called a dog. Without that dog to transmit the torque being brought up through this rosette right here, this entire star is offset clockwise ever so slightly, and that's because it got bent. So now we're fixing it, and we're going to come back in, and we're going to retime this. And we'll drive a punch ever so slightly in each one of these cylinders, and we're going to push this entire star wheel back around clockwise. I've selected a punch that very nearly mirrors the taper of the inside of this cylinder. I don't want to go all the way in it, but I don't want too much angle. I don't want too much angle because then I'm flaring metal on the top and you get crazy with this. By the way, I don't know what the spot price of gold is, but go back and look at my uh, Worth his weight in gold, and I weigh an eighth of a ton, right? There was a time back in my 40s when I had to keep NASA apprised of where I was because my mass was screwing up geostationary orbiting satellites. All right, so let's take a look at this here. Um, let's see here. We're going to tap that out. And I don't know if this is going to show up on camera very well, but there's a silver spot etched right across the top here. There's a little silver tick there, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. There's a big one right there. So what we're going to do, hang on a second, I'm going to come out of camera again. I'm going down here into my drawer with the stones in it. Right, uh, oh, I was in the right door to start with. Right here. And I'm just going to very lightly stone the shiny parts. I don't know if this is going to show very well, but you see, I'm not killing it. I'm not dragging it. I'm not beating on it. I'm just very, very lightly kissing the outsides of these. That one doesn't have any on it. That one does. And that one had a little bit right there. Oh, mark her back up again. And keep going as with most projects i did an lc smith here last week and just to hand fit the rotary bolt on that thing my apprentice and i took that gun apart 16 times to get that lc smith right and i did all that and i gave it back to the local gun shop and the owner over it went wow this is awesome checker it yes sir i can do that <laughs> and here we go back down in there now that damn near just fell in. 
Okay, so now we take it back out again and we look and we see that we are aligned radially. And in fact, we know we're aligned radially. Do me a favor and grab me that mooner over there, please. Uh, yeah, that's it right there. Cool. So it's just an idiot check and it's the wrong cylinder. I know this is still set up for 455, but I just want to see, look, okay, we have clean smooth it's not hanging up it's not dragging on any corners insertion that's the wrong ammo for the gun but it's a quick and dirty check um because this is the cylinder that hasn't been shaved this is still chambered in 455 so we'll knock that back out and we'll take a look yep a little bit more stoning right uh right there right there and i'm not kidding with how much stoning you need it's not much well, I'm going to do me here a trigger job. No, you're not. You're going to do a trigger screw up. You didn't fail. You redefined your objectives. There we are again, right? <sighs> okay. Going to resharpie. Tick do. Tick do. Tick do. Tick do. Tick do. We're almost there, guys. Gals. I don't know if there's any ladies out there. I don't think I've answered any comments from any ladies. I'd welcome the ladies. I have three. Hang on a minute. Score! I am the carbon-based life form! Fucking spider. All right, here we go. All right, we'll tap that in. Tap that back out. We are damn near there. We are damn near there. We're almost there. All right, we'll be right back once I get this finished. I've got this back in now, and I've got it timed. Nice and smooth, you see. Now you can see through my hands. Nice and smooth all the way around. Now all I'm going to do is a little bit of stone work, and I'm going to clean this up in the back back here, and we're going to be golden. So this is the top of that pin that we drove in, and we left it as a bit of a rivet. This thing is soft. I mean soft. Like, wow, soft. Like, we had to be very, very careful when we were stoning things. I'm sorry that's jumping around so much. And I know I'm taking off the patina. Oh, my God, no. Don't take off the patina. Deferred maintenance, guys. 50 years of deferred maintenance. There we go. It's nice and smooth. And now I'm just going to clean up around the edges. And yeah, I'm going to admit to you, I'm going to throw a little bit of cold blue on this because we're moving metal. And I don't want to move a lot of metal because all this metal was here for a darn good reason in the first place. So you don't want to, you want to move it. You don't want to grind it or polish it off. Okay, but this is a successful pin recovery. I don't have a round of 455 for us to drop in here. Um, so they're going to, they're going to observe and report at the range. CNR cell is going to observe and report at the range and let me know whether or not we've got any issues here that have to be clipped off right there. This is revolver smithing, man. You don't just come in here with both feet. You gotta be nice and gentle. Simple jobs sometimes aren't so simple. Wow. This was supposed to be a, just a quick and dirty pin replacement. Three hours on the bench. Glad to have done it. Glad I got to do it for you guys and really enjoyed it. Um, and we'll catch you on the backside. Cue Sonorous Exit Music.